Retail Banking Upswing We all know retail banking is a banking service that is geared primarily towards individual customers. Many of the banks have been building large branch networks and increasing the share of retail related positions on their balance sheets. In this lesson, we will state the reasons for upswing in retail banking, identify the threats of retail boom, recognize the importance of retail banking to Indian economy, and describe the other sources of finance than banks. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the reasons for upswing in retail banking, explain the threats to retail boom, state the importance of retail banking in Indian economy, and explain other sources of retail finance. The issue of retail banking is extremely significant and topical. And equally vital is to know and analyze the reasons which gave boost to the retail banking in India. All over the world, retail lending has been a spectacular innovation in the commercial banking sector in the past few years. On a broader perspective, following are the main reasons which contributed to the upswing of retail banking. They are economic prosperity and the consequent increase in purchasing power has given a stimulus to a consumer boom. India's economy grew at an average rate of 7 to 8 percent and continues to grow almost at the same rate. Changing consumer demographics indicate vast potential for growth in consumption, both qualitatively and quantitatively. India is one of the countries having highest proportion, 70 percent of the population below 35 years of age. Decline in the interest rate have also contributed to the growth of retail credit by generating the demand for such credit. Relatively safety implied by the mortgage loans and lowering the cost of consumer durables and automobiles due to competition. Increasing use of credit or debit cards as plastic money and advisory services, real estate, investment and insurance. Technology-aided proliferation of different service platforms and interest rate spreads are wide since customers are too fragmented to bargain effectively. The treasury income of the banks, which had strengthened the bottom lines of banks for the past few years, has been on the decline during the last two years. In such a scenario, retail business provides a good vehicle of profit maximization. Retail banking upswing is due to integration of a risk management culture within the strategic framework with availability of various risk management instruments. Large numbers of clients can facilitate marketing, mass selling and the ability to category or select clients using scoring systems or data mining. At the bank level, the principal attraction of retail banking seems to be the belief that its revenues are stable and thus can offset volatility in the non-retail businesses. Retail banking gives a handy way of transaction, internet banking resulting in increased rate of online frauds, loans to individuals for housing, car purchases and other consumer spending more than tripled from 2001 to 2005 from dollar 145 billion to an estimated dollar 477 billion resulting in overcrowding traffic and consecutively hiking prices of petrol in international market simple economic rule applies here increase in demand of a product increases prices of the product credit card skimming fraud is still a dollar 45 million business, forcing banks to step up security at ATMs. Fraudsters and thieves are unfortunately becoming more and more sophisticated and bold in their methods. Retail banking gives a handy way of transaction. Internet banking resulting in increased rate of online frauds. It is feared that the entry of global business giants into organized retail would make redundant the old Indian banks resulting in dislocation in traditional economic structure 
the taxation system still favors small retail business. Banks doing retail business always come with attractive products and services. Bundling with many terms and conditions applying on them which are generally for the profit maximization and risk management of the banks but they do not educate the customer about them and just sell their product and ultimately the customer feels cheated and helpless. This way retail banks are fooling around the common people. Retail banking sector has been the dominant element in the country's financial system of course including commercial banks because they are also stepping in retail banking sector. Indian economy now shows growing signs of being led by consumption which is largely bank financed. Enhancing manufacturing competence and capabilities would strengthen the growth process and also its competitiveness. The sector has performed the key functions of providing liquidity and payment services to the real sector and has accounted for the bulk of the financial intermediation process. Besides institutionalizing savings, the banking sector has contributed to the process of economic development by serving as a major source of credit to households, government and business and to weaker sectors of the economy like village and small scale industries and agriculture. SMU development is critical for any growth process to be robust and sustained. Banks should focus on a continuous development on the product side, particularly for the corporates and other major segments of the customers. Product range enables to banks to offer a wide range of on and off balance sheet services that could increase the overall reach and access. That will be of great relevance for the real economy. In addition to banks, there are private financiers and non-banking financial companies in India providing retail finance to individuals and businesses. Industrial finance corporations and other private public undertakings such as PTC are also sources of finance in India. Sources of finance in India can be broadly classified as long-term sources of finance short-term sources of finance and medium-term sources of finance. Theoretically, such classification is easy to understand, but practically there is some overlapping of such sources of finances. In addition, nature as well as the character of the business defines what long-term finance requirement is and what short-term finance requirement is. To finance such assets, long-term source of finance options would be equity and some term loans. When it is external source of finance, then the lender may require that an asset be mortgaged, pledged or hypothecated. Short-term assets are sundry debtors, stocks, investments, cash and bank balances. Attempt is made to balance these with corresponding liabilities such as sundry creditors. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The role of internet banking in the growth of the economy is sizable and significant. Right or wrong? Right. Credit card skimming fraud is still a dollar forty-five million business forcing banks to step up manufacturing at ATMs. Right or wrong? Wrong. Retail banking gives a handy way of transaction banking resulting in increased rate of online frauds. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The issue of retail banking is extremely significant and topical and equally vital is to know and analyze the reasons which gave boost to the retail banking in India. On a broader perspective, following are the main reasons which contributed to this upswing of retail banking. They are economic prosperity and the consequent increase in purchasing power has given a stimulus to a consumer boom. 
the treasury income of the banks, which had strengthened the bottom lines of banks for the past few years, has been on the decline during the last two years. Retail banking gives a handy way of transaction, internet banking resulting in increased rate of online frauds. It is feared that the entry of global business giants into organized retail would make redundant the old Indian banks resulting in dislocation in traditional economic structure. The taxation system still favors small retail business. Retail banking sector has been the dominant element in the country's financial system. Of course, including commercial banks because they are also stepping into the retail banking sector. In addition to banks, there are private financiers and non-banking financial companies in India providing retail finance to individuals and businesses.